This is the Style Matters Podcast, brought to you by Little Yellow Couch. I'm Zandra, your host, creator of the slow style approach to uncovering and implementing your signature style, one that represents who you are and actively helps you become who you want to be. This show isn't about hacking the latest trends or coming up with design rules you aren't allowed to break. Instead, my aim is to talk with the most thoughtful designers about their process of creating beauty, how they make their choices, and what makes a room really work, and about the substantive reasons about why developing one style or aesthetic really matters. If you're ready to make your home a meaningful place to be, you are in the right place. I'm so glad you're here. When was the last time your table prompted you to think about big life questions? And do you have a candle holder that doesn't just illuminate with a little flame, but demands you become meditative when lit? This is how I think of the furniture designed and made by my two guests today. Angie West and Alberto Velez have joined forces to create a new furniture company called Refractory, where they bring together their creativity from concept to the final process of manufacturing at their foundry in Chicago. I wanted to have them on because I think it's so important as consumers to understand the skill, practice, discipline, and vision involved in making something from scratch with the hands of humans. Especially when we are overwhelmed with objects that are mass-produced and identical, their work and their dedication to craftsmanship stands out as something we can all aspire to incorporate into our homes. And I have to say, you really do need to check out the show notes page of this episode to see photos of the collections we refer to. So if you're driving or at the gym or walking the dog, go to littleyellowcouch.com and click on podcast when you get home, because you may even want to re-listen to this episode while you're looking at these beautiful, meaningful pieces of art, even though it's also furniture. All right, here's Angie and Alberto. Angie West and Alberto Velez, welcome to the Style Matters podcast. It's wonderful to have you both here. Thank you. Thank Thank you so much. The first thing Thank I you want you to do, yes, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this conversation. I love what you are doing. So I'm really excited to talk about the craftsmanship, the, the creative thought process behind everything. Um, I, you know, every once in a while, we do have people on the show that are not um, that are not designers, or maybe they are design, interior designers, but they also do other things, or maybe they're pure makers. And I'm just very, I just really think it's important that we all understand how things are made, what the thought process is, the creative process, the iter- iterative process. So we're going to have a great conversation. Excellent. Excellent. Yep. The first thing I want you to do, though, is tell us about your vision for Refractory, because these furniture pieces are functional, but but they could easily be art pieces. They remind me of sculptures. So what what is the brand all about? What are you trying to do with creating this this furniture company? Um, Sure, I'll jump in. Um, We, well, it it really comes back to, to sort of needing to create um, a silver lining, for, you know, during the pandemic, mm. um, the, the pause that was sort of forced upon all of us um, created this space and very much a necessity to keep, um, to keep West Supply, our sister company, which is a 12 year old um, fabrication business and cast bronze and cast glass and lighting, et cetera, um, to keep it activated and keep mm. it intact and, um, and to maybe do more than just keep it intact. So we, you know, really leaned into the the talent and um, experimental nature of, of kind of what we do and all the talent of our crew to say, what could we do of our own expression? You know, the, the fabrication company has been a um, discreet um, maker and problem solver for, you know, many other well-known brands and, and artists and sculptors, et cetera. But it, we hadn't really, we had not created um, a clear point of view or, or an entity really that could hold our own intellectual property. So hmm. uh, Alberto and I 
saw the moment and saw an opportunity and um and we had a blank sheet of paper two years ago. So, hmm. um, so we, yeah, so we, we created something beautiful during a time that was so difficult for everyone. Um, and it was therapeutic and, uh, and like I said, necessary. Yeah. Uh, Angie, I just wasn't expecting to ask you this next question. So I have to oh. think about it for a second. Sure. Um, so that's really interesting to me that the pandemic, it, it, so there was pressure on the the foundry the the fabrication company as you said you were building pieces that were specced and requested by other companies and and you saw a drop in that business because of the pandemic and so that's why you thought oh we need to start creating our own our own pieces is that is that right we i mean i had always wanted to do that and certainly alberto is a a prolific um, and, and phenomenal world-class designer. So I had always wanted to have my, have my own brand and be able to express myself as an artist, okay, um, as a creative director, et cetera. And then Alberto and I sp were spending a lot of time together that summer, uh, really consulting for one another in, in different, you know, in sort of different ways. And yeah. all those lunches and dinners and evenings in the <laughs> studio turned into a, you know, let's do a thing. So, so, so it was really an opportunity. I mean, this pause, I think created yeah. for so many of us, this self-reflection of what the hell am I doing with my life? Right. <laughs> and, and, and can I do something differently and take advantage of this enforced, you know, uh, break? Yeah. Is that where, so, so the impetus because because you originally said, you know, we wanted to sort of sa not save the business, but you said something along the lines like, oh, well, the business is going through a dip. We need to do something to shore it up. But it sounds like it was really more of a sort of taking advantage of this craziness where nobody knew what was going to happen and saying, I'm going to put my energy into something I'm passionate about. Yeah, I, I would yeah. say two things. One is, I'm sorry, Alberto, I, quickly, when I said keep the business intact, it's really... In a foundry in a glasswork studio, you have we have 45 people, and there's such an incredible it's a kaleidoscope of of specialized talents, right? Okay. So, mm -hmm. And it's a culture, it's a family. Yeah. And so by intact, I mean, you know, you just at a certain point if you if you start to, there's a certain point you can't really shrink <laughs> beyond yeah. you can't become too small. Or if you do, you know, it will fracture. So so that's what I meant by that. Um huh. okay. And then I think we also, you know, when you're a discrete fabricator, um, sometimes it's difficult to market yourself and to express what you're really capable of because mm. everything you're making is someone else's um, intellectual property and someone else's right. Freedom, right? So right. you can't splash it all over social media. And yeah, I see. Yeah. So this has also been a way, um, a way to really point to the talent and what we can do at West Supply um, in a more liberated kind of fashion. Okay, okay. Well, it, it what has come out of this time is really, really stunning. And and it, like I said, it's it definitely bridges that gap or walks the line between um, art and and function, art and and furniture, art and uh, you know art and utility. So. Um, Alberto, I'm going to join, jump over to you for, for a mm -hmm. minute, and you are bringing to Refractory and your background with Holly Hunt and, and sort of what your passion is, you know, why you wanted to start this, this company. Well, what, um, yeah, it was, it was definitely, as Angie was saying, uh, and as we've been talking about, it was a, it was a moment, it was something that happened. Um, it wasn't that much of a plan. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um. Uh, you know, I, I had been um, a design director for, for Holly Hunt for 10 years. I, I moved to Chicago to do that mm -hmm. um, um, in 2010. And it was interestingly a position at Holly Hunt that more or less Angie had. Okay. <laughs> so I came to replace her. And, um, and uh, you know, ironically, it was immediately the person, even though she was leaving the company that I engaged with the most, and we went out to dinner, and, you know, yeah. um, <laughs> and uh, she was, you know, how can I help you? And, and, you know, and I took over a team, essentially a design team uh, that she had, which was kind of the, the function was to, their function is to, to create designs or for, for me to create designs for the Holly Hunt's own collection, you know, its own brand. It's right. called the Holly Hunt Studio, and uh, work directly with Holly herself was, 
you know, uh, a great um, sort of uh, designer herself. Mm-hmm. And um, and so between Holly and I, we, we worked together for 10 years and this team to, to we created, I don't know, 300 or more pieces of furniture during that time. Right. And we put them out into the market and, and, and most of them are did really well and they stood they still do really well and I built that team over the time and um, that's more or less what I did along you know along with creating these concepts and, and that's what I do I'm an industrial designer been mm-hmm. a designer all my life um, grew up in a family of, of creatives um, so I, you can say it's my passion but it's also all I've ever known right. um, <laughs> you know? and so um I, I can't do anything else. I don't know how to do anything <laughs> else. Um, I can ride a bicycle. Uh, so um, then uh, I, I think one of the most important experiences I had at Holly Hunt, and, and in my previous engagement, I lived in New York and worked with a, with a company there, was, or my favorite thing was just meeting the, the, the best kind of craftsmen and okay. manufacturers. You know, there's mm-hmm. many sides to this high-end interiors business, um, there's the clients, there's the sales environment, there's all that fancy showrooms. And I like that, but by far my favorite was, um, and, and you can speak of passion here, what I call industrial tourism, which was okay. to, to yeah. go all over the world and the country, uh, going to these excellent workshops and factories, meeting incredible manufacturing done at the highest level possible. People that really... Yeah have, like you said, a passion and a very high regard for doing things really well um, and the best possible way they can be done. Um, The person that was most passionate about that that I've ever met is is Holly Hunt herself. And and she really reinforced that notion in me and perhaps in in Angie of like, that should never be compromised, you know? Mm. And, um, you know, even though I travel all over the world, you know, meeting some of the great craftsmen you can you can meet uh, around the world of furniture and lighting. It was it was what Angie started and what she created here in Chicago that became my favorite place to come and mm. hang out and mm. and create designs for and all that. And so um, it was really it was really such a treat. The, the, the casting process, the whole foundry environment um, uh, and um just it was I really really fell in love with it from the beginning and and we created a number of little you know a few concepts here and there for the Holly Hunt collection uh well I mean I guess I'm not sure if I'm supposed to say that but um um <laughs> you know we, here at the foundry and that became a successful driver business for for both I suppose um for for Angie and uh in the process of doing that, we became close friends. And, and then eventually the pandemic happened. And um, like so many companies, there was like a weeks and months of panic where, yeah. where companies just shut down entire yeah. divisions and departments. And they were like, okay, we've developed a ton of product in the last year. We're not going to develop any more product. So I really felt like it was a, a good moment to to say, you know, I've been I've been wanting myself to 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 be more independent uh, mm-hmm. and, and to try to create something on my own. And um, so I called Angie and said, look, I have some time on my hands. I, you know, I'm going to move on. And um, you know, what do you think? And uh, yeah, that was essentially it. I mean, I knew it was the first person I should call. And that's, that's all I knew. Great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and right. So that's right. where, it, that's where, that's where it happened. And so we, you know, the minute we could get together, which was not immediately, right? <laughs> right. We were all kind of like locked yes. up and we couldn't see each other and we can, um, but um, yeah, like she said, we started hanging out and, uh, and then very quickly um, we created this, this idea. Uh, so, so, and, and it, you've been, I would say prolific in two years um, because I, I, to me, your, your uh, collections are <coughs> there. You've got a lot there. Um, so let's, let's talk about that a little bit. I think your furniture, there's a lot of storytelling going on in the furniture. Um, and I, I, it's, 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 that's sort of an abstract idea that furniture tells a story to some people. Um, but it's so clear when I look at yours that I think it's a great example for, for, to, to help people who maybe are, you haven't thought about furniture in that way. Um, so, so I want to start with some small pieces. Uh, let, let's start with uh, Kofri and Sloop. And if I'm mispronouncing, please let me know. Maybe it's Kofri. Uh, yeah. 
Okay. And, and so, you know, coffee is, uh, in my mind, it's this object for ritual. And you, you're going to tell us what I mean by that. And then, and then sloop is candlelight. So, so describe us, describe them for us. And then uh, what is the thought process behind them? What's the story? Sure. I'll, I'll start with coffer. Um, the coffer series, you nailed it actually with, with ritual. Okay. Um, and that's an itch we've just barely scratched. We have so many ah. around that, um, around routine and, and, um, and scent for that matter. And, and, and sort of those types of, you know, the, the unseen, um, experience yeah. you can create with design. Um, but coffer was about, you know, being able make, make objects really that the, the ultimate keeper of the object has influence over. So the lids to some of the coffers have um, a particular flower frog where, you know, you can use them for floral design or, or dried arrangements, um, that kind of thing. And then the shorter vessels, you know, would hold up, hold your favorite pen on the top, but some mm. of your other favorite useful objects inside. Um, one is an incense holder. Yeah. That kind of thing. Um the texture on the top is uh, is a shagreen cast into yeah. the bronze across the the lids, and then the the bases are cast resin, and they can be any hue. Um, on the underside of the lids, there's a great example of sort of one of our um, approaches in refractory, which is to embed a little bit of a surprise or something that isn't necessarily marketed or seen. Ah. Um, our quotes and words on the undersides of the lids that were patterned. Uh, prior to the casting process by use of a, uh, you know, the old school label makers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. And it, where you, you know, you click one letter at a time and it's. Yes. The, um, yes. So I had, a, I had an olive green one. I, yeah. I remember it clearly. Yeah, exactly. I, my, I grew up around office supplies. My, my grandfather <laughs> started an office um, supply business a long time ago. So, oh, I love it. so we were in the studio, you know, cl clicking out long quotes and cutting them up and attaching them to things. So anyway, <sighs> There's a, that, that, that it speaks a bit to the, you know, between Alberto and I, there's an incredible amount of rigor. There's an incredible amount of um, consideration and, you know, constantly re-sculpting a design or a pattern or a notion to get it, to get it just so. Mm -hmm. but at the same time, we want to be playful mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and be a little bit irreverent. So the coffer series allowed us a little bit of a moment to do that on the undersides. I of the love it. Yeah. And the that element of surprise in design um, is is so wonderful, and uh, um, it, it 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 there's a delight in it when you're experiencing it um, that that I think is very valuable uh, to just to our our everyday experience, our everyday lives. Yeah. And I think you know words are usually a, you you know you see a word or you hear a word but to really touch it you know when you're in the, ah. you're in the casting process you you know you're essentially creating a relief of some kind of some dimension and yeah. um, so um we've had fun kind of i would say that the the sort of most um the most conceptual and most uh gosh what's the word um experimental textures and, and ideas around motifs are, are, are yet to come. So. Okay. Well, great. I am looking forward to the <laughs> continuation of your creativity. And, and what about the candlelight? Yeah. The, the sloops. Um, oh. Yeah. Um, so the, the, yeah, that was um, like, I mean, when, when we, when we came together as, as two designers, we, we conceived a lot of ideas together but we also had a bunch of ideas kind of pent up, put away somewhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, each of us. Um, and um, so did uh, so many of the wonderful artisans that, that, that uh, work with Angie. And so a lot, our, our collections made a lot with some of those things that were hidden in a drawer, you know, yeah. you know, waiting for that opportunity. This was one of them. I, I had been playing with this idea of, um, of, candle holders of sorts, uh, mainly for little tea lights or votives, not, mm -hmm. not tall candles. Um, everything I, I had seen or that I would remember along the lines of that kind of object where were really just linear elements that were pointing up in some right. way or another. Um, and always very um, 
kind of symmetrical and, and classic looking. And so um, I wanted to create something that was essentially asymmetrical, also mm. maybe directional, something that looked like I was going somewhere, but yes. had lights on it, almost like a vessel, like a ship. Yes. Um, and also something that had surface, not just lines. And because so much of what we're doing is, is about surface quality mm. um, and about texture. So yeah, those things came out of there I mean and, and so they're essentially little compositions of five or seven or three lights arranged asymmetrical um that you know when they're lit and everything else is dark you, you almost see this idea of right constellation right like when you when they tell you oh this star over there and this one over there and this one right. over here it appears to make no sense but oh there, there's a there's a ladle or there's a bear or there's you know what I mean right um, right it's a little bit of that. I mean, maybe. Um, so, yeah, that's essentially what they are. It's, just it's, it's compositions it's, of line and surface and, and, and point and, you know. Yeah, well, I, I hadn't thought about the um, the idea of the constellations and the stars and yeah. how the and how that was used by sailors to navigate their way. I mean, it's all kind yeah. of connected. I just got back from Venice, and so I cannot help but see the gondolas in the shapes and the idea of cutting through that water, but so quietly. There's no motor, yeah. you know, and and the the texture of the water, and and then seeing the texture on the on the vessels that you have designed, or it's really, well, and I have to say that about all of your work is that I want to touch everything. <laughs> of, of, <laughs> the, right. the tactile nature of everything you guys are are putting out there is, um, for someone like me who can't help herself, it's it's very, it's, it's a wonderful. Um, all right, well, let, let's, let's move on to some, um, some of the bigger pieces uh one of my favorite collections of yours is called tallow i'm a plant collector i can see i can just picture having a single beautiful sculptural plant sitting on one of these tables it, the whole thing would just be this this not just a, a piece of art although i keep referring to your work as pieces of art but there's something very meditative about it. I can see myself just sort of, if I give myself the grace of 10 minutes on my couch to just stare at my plant on this, this one of these tables in the tallow collection. Um, tell us a little bit about, about the story behind that one. So um, tallows, I mean, uh, the larger, uh, part of the larger um, concept behind refractory in general, or at least our initial collections was very inspired by, well, a lot by landscape and mm. by in particular the North American landscape, uh, the imagery of, of the Southwest, the, the frontier and all these wonderful areas that are essentially uh, eroded. What Before we continue with the conversation, I want to introduce you to my slow style approach to creating a home you love. Slow style is a step by step framework that puts you at the front and center of your home rather than products, trends and other people's ideas of what beauty looks like. To get started, I've created a new worksheet called Dream Home Action Plan, and it's all about adjusting your mindset about what you really want from your home and what you want to experience inside it, because I believe everyone deserves to live inside beauty right now, not someday when you can afford all the bells and whistles that you see on Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. <laughs> I'm dating myself. Does anyone remember that show? Anyway, this worksheet is the first step to reframing what you want to get out of life and how your home can help you achieve that. It's free and it's available on our website, littleyellowcouch.com. Just click on the yellow button right at the top called free guide, and then I'll jump in your inbox and we can start a conversation about your dream home. Again, that's littleyellowcouch.com. Okay, let's get back to the episode. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 all what we see in the Southwest is, a, is a, you know, it's the result of, of millions of years of erosion, which is natural and it's fine. And there was an ocean that was there and all these things. Um, so, you know, I was just trying to play with those elements uh, of, of erosion, which is a very different type of texture pattern. 
Mm. Um, this idea of layers of time kind of removed from, from material. Um, uh -huh. yeah. and, um, and then also the, the, the interesting uh, kind of occurrence of plateaus, of perfectly yes. horizontal uh, areas that occur in these type of landscapes quite frequently and at different heights, and, and they become a big part of the vocabulary. It's beautiful, yes. it's beautiful to see the vertical surfaces have tremendous activity and evidence of, of time. And then there's the flatness on top that is kind of uh, right. kind of uh, much more much quieter. Um, anyway, so it's a little bit of that, you know, a series of different heights and different plateaus. You know, some of the tables have multiple ones, and, um, and then they as they go down in their sort of what holds them up again a surface versus just a, a leg. Um, it gets more and more active towards the bottom. Um, right. And um, and so, yeah, we, that's essentially what the, the Tallow series is. And uh, so it has three, three tables at the moment, but we hopefully want to expand to more. And yeah. that's one of the things that, that we did in, in, the, in the whole collection that we were disciplined about and that I'm very proud of is that we, we, we set these different notions and these different uh, families of pieces together with a few initial iterations each. Mm -hmm. uh, the tallow, the promontory, the tributary. Some of these were kind of pretty uh, advanced developments that, that Angie had, you know, when we first started and we just gave them a boost and turned them into, yeah. into things. Um, and now we have these, these, these languages ready um, and in, in different areas um, with very distinct personalities that we can expand on. And, and mm -hmm. that's kind of like what we're going to do moving forward along with creating new ones right hopefully. right yeah I, I can see the plateaus i was in i spent <laughs> a month in in new mexico um and just i've been there several times i just the landscape is so stunning it's it, so it, beautiful it's yeah. so be, it's 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 <clears throat> many people assume or think if they haven't been there that it's kind of barren and it's the opposite of that yeah, um yeah. but the plateaus are, are they're so stunning especially you know i'm i'm from the east coast and and primarily from new england and it just you know we just don't have that so it's is i love i love being in a different kind of a very different kind of it's environment like almost it's one of the only moments where you see time you know, oh, that's like, a great way you, to put you it just, you see it you see it yes the, yes you know the, the 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 well the whatever the millions of years it took for all these things to form right or to deform or like right you know, right uh, it's yeah it's 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 incredible um if if you are focused on on expressing texture in a certain phase of your career like we are right now mm -hmm. there's there's no better inspiration than that yeah mm. Well, there are other, so much of your inspiration is coming from the natural world, as I think you just mentioned, and, and I want to move on to some even bigger pieces that are parts of the Loma and tributary families. One to me seems like it's referencing mountains, the other maybe rivers or waterways. Uh, talk to us about, about, let's talk with, about both of them, start wherever you want. Sure, I'll, uh, let's go to the tributary. Um, that's a uh... An interesting piece because, um, like Alberto mentioned, there were a few, a few little motifs that had appeared in in some custom work that West Supply had done for others, um, and one of them was um, a really large, a big commission for monumental bronze doors, really, oh. really more like interior gates, um, mm. for a really fantastic residential project in Chicago, and um, our associate creative director and I had designed these. Uh, wonderful little tiles um, that could kind of be attached to the to the uprights of this gate. Okay, and it was a play on on fluting, really. Like mm. if, you, if you take fluting and you invert some of the flutes and you make them wider and shorter, you can create a asymmetrical, more kind of, more kind of a musical mm. approach to thinking of of, of fluting. Um, and then the light play is really beautiful when you combine that with texture and, and patina. But what was really interesting and, and a bit of a surprise in the end is we were so focused on designing and considering the surface, but then when you cut through the cross section of it, because they were two-sided, you have this beautiful, almost like the spine of a creature. 
oh, yeah. um, that comes in that cross section. Um, so it was just really tiles. And we, uh, huh. when, when refractory was, um, you know, a blank slate and we were dreaming and scheming, you know, those tiles were just kind of all around and, um, right. and so we extruded it and stretched it and bent it and, and sort of pushed it into, into a furniture language. Um, mm. It's been a, it's kind of a gift that keeps on giving it, it's sort of like promontory is as well. It's a motif that you end up, you, it just, it works, you know, Yes. You ask, yes. you know, without well, being, without being obvious about it or, or, you know, um, you know, having any, any shortcuts about it at all, you can keep, you can keep asking the motif or the, the move, uh, if you will, to, to do something different. So even though the essence is there, it, it can bend differently. It can do, it can do things differently. So tributary, it may be like a river. Um, the piece keeps kind of giving to us that way. Right. Right. So that's, that's fascinating. <clears throat> the, the, um, the analogies, the metaphors, uh, there, there's some of the pieces are incredibly thin, at least they look thin to me. Um, and, you know, it's not until you get up a little bit closer that you start to see there's movement to them. And there's, you can almost picture the water kind of just falling off. Um, again, very meditative. I don't know, maybe, maybe, I don't know if, if a meditative, contemplative. Yeah. contemplative, is that something that you were hoping for with, with when people use experience by your, your furniture? Briefly, I wanted to touch on something. I made a note while you were speaking earlier um, about wanting to touch the work. Yeah, that was re that's really important to us because some work, whether it's in this materiality or others, um, you know, certainly these price points can be, you know, they can kind of reveal themselves as precious or fragile. And right. we, we wanted to not be in that lane at all. So huh. the texture, the pieces are meant to improve with the oils from your fingers the the leaning the touching the use ah and so that that's uh you know something that has to do with you know maybe a philosophy around durability and, and longevity right um, and even, maybe even the earth itself but uh but yeah the texture um it you know that that was a, a very disciplined and intentional sort of ethos that we that we've tried to be very very um very focused on right right and 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 your you great point about it about a lot of pieces the higher the price point the more precious they become and the more off limits they become and yeah. the more terrified <laughs> you are of hurting them <laughs> um yeah, I, I, these pieces, you want to touch them and maybe in the touching is where the contemplation comes from. Um, Alberta, did you have something you wanted to say about the contemplative nature of the works? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, and you said quite, quite a bit, I think um, there's something quite wonderful about the, the qualities and the character of bronze and, mm. and, and the casting process itself. Um, there's quite a bit of it that we wanted to to bring back in a sense that so much of the work that I had done previously in bronze and that you see out there in the market done in bronze is a very smooth surface in general mm -hmm. uh, that people like, you know, all these beautiful kind of half shiny areas in bronze and um, not having been here uh, at the foundry, I, I was unaware that, that um, it takes a lot of work to make a, a cast piece of bronze look smooth, okay, and um, that there is a lot in the in the process that leaves a mark mm. that, that is inherent to the casting process for a texture to end up in the surface, mm. whether it's sand or whether it's wrinkles in the glass in the wax or whether mm. it's uh, little areas where where vent or or kind of material feeding uh, sort of elements were there and they were cut. All those things get deleted in the process yeah, for, yeah. for most of the designs that we um, that we make for others um, with a lot of work. And yeah. so we started working like how can we how can we leave a lot of this evidence of craft oh, um, love that. in the piece, you know, yeah. so yeah. that it tells its own story. Um, it's like Maybe even on the underside, I was conceived. Yeah. This is this yeah. is the method by which I was made. Um, 
and you can feel it, you can see it. And mm -hmm. uh, to, to us, I think that's our own best definition of, of luxury and of hmm. owning something that is very expensive, um, but with with much better reason. Like, you, it, you know, bronze will carry that. Bronze mm. will tell you, you know, how it was made, how it was joined, how it was, you know, and you can feel it. And, and over time, it'll get better because there'll be inclusions that, you know, will start to capture you know, life and, and finger oils. And, yeah. um, and so, yeah, there was, there's been a lot in, in that. And, but again, it's like when you were a kid and, and, and you grew up in the seventies and, and, and this popcorn stucco yes. style in the walls, uh, <laughs> you know, was in everybody's house and all of a sudden you're trying to go to sleep and you start discovering, Oh, yes, you do. there's a man and yes. then there's a car and then, then there's a, you know what I mean? Yes. Um, like so looking up at the clouds and seeing things think, in the clouds. I think, yeah, I think uh, surfaces with texture can have that mm. quality of like make you contemplate at them and discover shapes and all of a sudden, you know, fall asleep. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah, uh, yeah. But, but uh, yeah, I, I think the experience with bronze uh, to me has been a little bit like that. You, you can look at it a hundred times and every time is a different thing. Right. I, something that's occurring to me as you guys are speaking is there's two things happening here in your work which is there's it's very much at the human scale i'm not sure if scale is the right word but you know we we talk a lot in interior design about designing at the human scale you know hanging art so that it's at eye level not not up in the middle of the wall where it's centered you know and designing for a human experience an intimate experience and so you've got that going on with all of this texture and um, um, even visually, just just it draws you in and you the, the, it's first you get it visually and then it draws you in. And then you're like, OK, now I have to touch it. But then your <laughs> themes are so grand. They're so monumental in terms of Mother Nature and like the plateaus, the tributaries. So you've got you've kind of got both going on here, which which I'm really loving. I think you you. You touch on you picking up on something that that feels really good um, for us to hear because it it was part of some of our original um, our, our original concept sessions and conversations were that a mashup right an unexpected okay. pairing of you know Art Deco and the Frontier for example yeah yeah um, you know or the idea of armor that a warrior might have worn hundreds of years ago that takes on a feminine quality yeah. Um, so, you know, and that's not always a straightforward approach to, um, you know, to art direction or, or, or what have you. So we've, we've had fun with that and, and it's kind of a, a formula. Well, it's actually not a formula, but. Um, it, it, a founding yeah. idea. I mean, it's, yeah, a, it's like an yeah. exercise, right. That, that we have a lot of fun with. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, we're giving, we're giving ourselves permission to, to kind of express some of the feelings and some of the, like I said, sort of uh, uh, closeted ideas that we've mm -hmm. had for a while while we've been kind of busy creating for others, you know? Right. Um, and, you know, so you were asking earlier about the Lomas. Uh, yeah, let's talk about that. There's an interesting mm -hmm. other notion where, um, related to landscape, but it was a more personal idea uh, or personal experience, which I, I grew up in Colombia and um, all the way to my mid twenties. And um, it's one of those cases where you don't know what you have until you don't. Yeah. Uh, right. So uh, you, um, I grew up in Bogota, where you're always, always in the presence of these majestic mountains, uh, right, right, right then in front of you, mm. um, kind of humbling you down and creating mm -hmm. a visual reference. And you, you know which directions, which always, because there are mountains that are many times taller than the tallest building in the city. Right. Um, and um, and then we spent the weekends in in a mountain cabin uh, that we had, which is yeah. even more mountains. And right. um, and everywhere you look is the most unbelievable mountain a landscape, green as mm. green can be. And um, so then I eventually ended up in here in Chicago, where you know the flattest place on earth. Um, and um, <laughs> you know, when I go over a bridge on my bike, I'm like, it's a mountain. Um, <laughs> And um, and you miss it, you know what I mean. And you miss sure. it. You miss it terribly. You you feel something. Something really isn't there. Um, sure. And and so the loma is a concept about 
landscape in your memory. Ah. You know what I mean? The landscape that you remember um, yeah. and that you long for. You know, so it's inverted. It's inside. Yes. It's underneath. Right. I love um, that. It's um, helps shape the space that is inside of furniture, which is a, a subject that I've always personally liked to explore. Furniture, chairs and tables, especially, you know, shape space underneath them. So I like mm -hmm. to play with that. The shape of the space, not just the shape of the piece. Right. And so um, it, it does that and, and it forces people to look underneath the table and see what's going on. But there are elements on the edge of the table that all of a sudden creep underneath inside oh. and they start doing things inside. And so they make people go, hold on, what's going on? Right. And then you have to literally go on your knees and go on the knees. Um, and there's a lot of, yeah, all this verticality of mountains uh, going on um, downwards and inside. Um, mm. and yeah, it's, it's the idea of mountains and landscape in your memory and in your, um, sort of, yeah, in your, your own sort of longing, if, if, mm. if you will. Mm. Um, and, um, it's only one piece so far in the series. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, but we have, we're cooking more. Um, yeah. Oh, you're cooking more. Uh, yeah. Uh, you say you say memory, which which is uh, evocative, but I I I, I would also say it's, there's a dreamlike quality to it because it's inverted, mm -hmm. and yet, like to your point, it's it's inverted on the 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 in the piece itself, but the space underneath it's not inverted; it's upright again. No, so, no. so it creates yeah. a yeah. It's very dreamlike, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Angie, I mean, we're say I mean, I think I think I think bronze because it has this artistic. Um, and sculptural kind of connotation and reputation it kind of gives us license to be sculptural and organic and and do yes. you know it's, it's wonderful the casting process how it allows you to really create any shape you want and and it justifies itself and um, you, you are you both yeah. are making me very much want to visit the foundry i really <laughs> want to see how this is it. actually made yeah um I, I think a lot of us need to see that to to understand and appreciate the time attention care thought process creativity all of it that, that goes into it um i i really am excited to hear your answer to my every week question which is why does style matter what you know why when we don't know the the art and the craft and the skill behind something what what are we missing what are we losing when we don't know about it we stop appreciating it and then we stop valuing it and then it's gone um I, I, well i'll stop talking i'm sure you have interesting answers to why style matters for me, it, it's um, it's a language, right? It's I think it was Mucha Prada who said something to the effect of, you know, that style is an instant language. You can ex it's an expression without having to say anything out loud. Mm. Um, and maybe it's, it, you know, which makes it a bit ethereal and a bit subjective, of course. But it's it's like the acoustics in your home, or it's the music mm. that fills a space. Um, you know, it's the wabi-sabi. Uh, mm -hmm. It's the thing you don't have to explain. You can explain it and you can tell the story if you want. And we enjoy that very much, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't have to, you know. Mm -hmm. It gives you an ability to to say something without saying anything at all. So that mm. for me is, is you know, is where it is. And I think the future of our brand is, and our studio is to, is to just excavate more into that, into into scent, into ritual, into things you, into things you wear, um, into things that you collect that hold meaning to you. And where do you put them? The Loma, for example, has a little hidden shelf on the inside uh -huh. um, where you could hide something or you could leave a note to someone in the future. Or you, yeah. you know, we, we love sort of acknowledging that, and maybe this, this veers away from the word style, but that these pieces are going to be around for a very, very long time, you know? Yes. Kind of like yes. the armadillos from, you know, <laughs> millions of years ago that, that we are in love with. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and these pieces will go on into the future well, you know, well after work on. So they're, they're capturing a moment in time and maybe that's, maybe that's what style is in some ways. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I love that. Alberto. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm so stylish. <laughs> <laughs> 
Angie will attest to that. No, it just uh, to me, it, it's you know it, the word is is interesting. Um, I I'm, I think I, I guess style when you're um, when you're a creative professional equates to personality, right? Um, it's just a projection of wherever you are uh, and how much of it do you actually want to project on? Mm. Very little in my case. Um, <laughs> I, I'm 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 uh, you know I'm. How should I say? I mean, uh, to me, how you how you began this discussion is the most important thing um, about how I see style or my style, which is uh, the storytelling of mm. objects um, and how how pieces um, tell their own story and how they and how they are depositories of of the experience of the owner or of their own making. Um, mm. And uh, and that's why, uh, for me, it, what we're doing here is so valuable because that there's you can read so much into every piece. Um, I personally, you know, where I live, it, it, my wife kind of dictates the style of my house. <laughs> I, I'm very happy to let that be the case because she has great style and mm. she has um, a phenomenal way of arranging things and everything. Doesn't matter what we have, everything tends to look very nice very mm, chic mm-hmm. and um, so I'm, I'm happy to not interfere too much there um <laughs> i do own however um quite a number of pieces that were kind of rejected prototypes of the ah. hundreds of furniture pieces that i have yeah been able to to design and to put into the market and to me over time they have more and more value because you know it's something that didn't make it into the market because there's something wrong with it that only know what it is. Only I know what it is. Uh-huh. And, and um, but it also makes them unique. There's no other like it. I, right. have, I would say at least 20 valuable pieces of furniture that are only unique uh-huh. in the world because they are somehow imperfect. And, wow. um, and I think that is something that, that, that we, in what we do is, um, is more and more important um, mm. to, and the casting process um, itself um, carries a lot of surprise. Mm-hmm. A lot of things go wrong. Wrong, you would say at the beginning, but unexpected. There's a lot of unexpected results once right. the molds are open. Uh-huh. And it has become kind of the biggest driver of our enthusiasm and our, <laughs> um, and our sort of, uh, yeah excitement about what we're doing is yeah you know it doesn't matter how much we can prescribe and how much 3d modeling and, and technology <laughs> we put into the creation of the mold something's going to come out that we don't expect and, <laughs> and and most of the time is going to be we're going to be able to make it cool and make it great and make it be right. a part of the story um and and i think that's that's essentially what what we are what well, grounds us right now and what drives us is like the embrace of the unexpected of the surprise of the imperfection yes as the the biggest evidence of of things that are handmade you know uh, uh, and things yes. that are that are made by by artists and experts and 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 people that you know uh this piece is going to be unique but not because of its design but because of what happened to it today you In know the process yes. and then you are going to take that to someone again and say you know yes we have a mold we can repeat this piece but still right the next one's not going to be exactly the same. that's and, right and like i said i have i have sofas and i have upholstery and i have that that have that have a critical impediment that prevented them from making <laughs> to the market but i love them for but that you reason. love them you know? oh my and gosh that's they fantastic would have a, they would have ended up in a dumpster um <laughs> if i would then go like you know what holly can i just take it home right, uh, right, and, right. um I don't know. I mean, it may be a little bit of a crazy thing to say about style, but but no. that to me is that 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 is a the style definition I like to live with these days is mm. is just taking trying to find a way to to validate something that isn't perfect. You know, it went a little bit off the plan, but yeah, but yeah, hey, like we all do. You know, what I mean? <laughs> like we all do. Well, that I way, think, I, mean, what I think if... the the period that we're living post this shakeup. Uh um it takes a lot of that you know and i mean it it takes a lot of like okay let's just live with this curveball you know yes Uh, how are we gonna yeah definitely 
what, one of my sort of guiding principles is that <laughs> style evolves. And I think that that sense of time, um, either in your own style as, you're, as you are developing and changing and therefore your surroundings are reflecting that, but or in a singular piece. And I think that you've described so beautifully this idea of especially you've focused a lot on bronze and it's how it evolves throughout the whole process, but then continues to evolve with the oil from our fingers and, you know, how people yes. interact with it. It's yeah. Yeah. This, this is, this is why I was so excited to have you guys on. It's just, we are talking about furniture at a very different level than, <laughs> you know, walking into Ikea, no disrespect to Ikea, you know, and just picking something off yes, the rack, yeah. you know? Yeah. Right. I mean, there's, there's place for it, but um, it's just, it, 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 the value in these kinds of pieces is in the stories that you have infused into them and then that we get to then lay our, our, our own stories on top of. Well, and then uh, the stories that um, kind of in conclusion that will, you know, these pieces will never uh, end up in a dumpster. Um, they'll yeah. be in, you know, homes and um, be useful for hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of years. So that's incredibly um, inspiring and also humbling to know mm. that they're really at the beginning of their journey. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you guys both so much. This is such a great <laughs> conversation. I really Thank appreciate you, it. We really appreciate it too. And I should say, in case you need, in case you want to include this in the recording. Okay. That we have three mascots. Oh yes. Are, We've been hearing not, them. They are not armadillos. They are bulldogs. And um, they're on a journey with me right now. So they they often chime in in yes. one way or another. Right. Uh, so uh, we right. appreciate you. Um, Angie is in Angie is traveling. She's in, she's in Dallas right now. She is in transit. And um, tell us their names. Uh, Chevy, Levi, and Bodine. Yeah. Okay. Great it's names. Great names. Nice to meet you. My, nice to meet you, boys. Yes. Um, <laughs> boys and girl. And boys and girl. Yeah. Boys yeah. and girl. Yeah. Oh. Thank you so much. Really appreciate uh, this opportunity to have a chat with you today. Yes, definitely. Thank it was you. A lot of fun. Good. Good. Thank you. Thanks so much for spending time with me today. If you've gotten something out of this episode, please be so kind as to leave a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening from. It really does help this show stay on the air. And also, don't forget to grab our free guide, The Dream Home Action Plan at littleyellowcouch.com. And also, that's where you can find the show notes pages for all of these episodes with photos and links to things that we've been talking about. Have a great week. Bye for now.